First of all, thanks for the opportunity for this debate, and I wanted to start by making a special mention of our early years and childcare professionals who often feel forgotten and overlooked. I know they feel often very undervalued and ignored. Um, they've been back at work for several weeks now. They've reopened our sector both last year and this year for essential workers and vulnerable children <clears throat> as the third wave of this horrible pandemic rages through the, the country. <clears throat> And tomorrow, actually, ironically, marks the one-year anniversary of 30,000 childcare professionals, crash owners and childcare various uh, practitioners and parents marching through Dublin to demand better terms and conditions. The service they have provided to essential workers and vulnerable children has been so important and a lifeline for so many families. They have really stepped up to the challenges posed by COVID-19 and many services have taken in older children, uh, school-aged children, to try and help facilitate frontline workers. They've been absolutely essential in alleviating the stress many parents feel during um, the last wave that we went through. Their skills, their professionalism, the contribution they make to the education of our young people is invaluable and I'd like to take this opportunity to sincerely thank them for their commitment. But they certainly want more than just thanks and admiration. They want better pay and conditions, they deserve better pay and conditions and they want their work to be valued by action um, of this government. They want their voices to be heard. We have a, a continued to have you know, a broken childcare system that has been underfunded. And the reality is, and I hear it on a daily basis, it, you know, we do not value, sorry, the government, unfortunately, they feel that they do not value our early years and our childcare professionals. I know and I appreciate that a lot of focus obviously has been on protecting people's lives and cannot be un uh, understated the impact this terrible disease has had on all of our health, our freedom, liberty, homegrown businesses, our children and people's mental health, our children's mental health. The list really is endless when we look at it, but it has impacted every aspect of our lives. But it has presented us with a unique once in a lifetime opportunity to completely overhaul the current childcare system. The reality is there can be no recovery without you know, a properly funded childcare sector that works for everybody. A strategy that doesn't simply patch up what we, what we have but thinks big and is brave. So I'm kind of conscious of time, so I'll, I'll move um, to my question. So the first question, ironically, is, is it kind of covers a lot of what I've just said around wages, terms and conditions for uh, early years educators and childcare professionals. Now that we do have the wage subsidy scheme in place, can the government commit to continue in this after the pandemic? Obviously, it would need to be increased as well, and we would need to see a proper wage scale in place. And I'd just like to ask the minister, that's the first question. I just have three others as well. Just conscious minister. Of Thanks, thanks very much, Deputy, and, and thanks, uh, thanks, thanks for, your, for your comments and your recognition of the sector. Um, as the Deputy knows, the employee uh, wage subsidy scheme is a, an all-of-economy economic support and is one that we were successful in getting applied to the childcare sector, uh, with, uh, uh, to, to the entire se sector, and, and an exemption from the, uh, the, the, the turnover requirements. And it's been absolutely essential in supporting the sustainability of, uh, of, um, of, of services. Um, the, uh, it's currently due to, to, to end for, uh, in, uh, at, the, at the end of, um, of, of March, uh, and, and at that period, the, the government will be, will be reviewing what additional supports need to be put in place for the economy. I'm very conscious of the low wages uh, in this sector. Uh, the government have committed and I have committed to prioritising addressing that. And as I've outlined today, we have the first steps towards that in the pre-JLC process, which I'm, uh, I'm very pleased to see has, has, come, has, has taken place successfully. Uh, I'm to get a report from uh, Dr. Kevin Duffy in, in, in the next number of days, and I look forward to uh, updating the House on uh, what measures Thank I'll take to, uh, to progress that. Deputy Function. Thanks. Uh, can I just clarify, Ken Carla, have I the rest of this time or is three minutes of that to, to Deputy well, Tully? You have all the time you like within okay. 5.48 minutes. Okay, now that's fine. I just don't want to take any of my colleagues' time and sometimes when you're trying to, to watch that as well. Um, thanks, Minister. And I, I should have said, I, I do recognise that you mentioned the JLC, um, a process I would be familiar with from, from previous work with SIP2, so I would hope that that will... Um, you know, have be a good and beneficial process, but I would make the point that I do believe governments can actually, you know, make that intervention in relation to wage scales without having a JLC process. But I welcome it as a step, definitely in the right direction. My second question is in relation to just the emergency funding for the sector. Um, will this be continued um, in terms of actually, you know, increased investment in the sector once we're uh, out of this pandemic? Thanks, Minister. 
Now, we, we need to be brief, Minister, because we have to try and get in Deputy Tully, I think. Um, Minister? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, we, we've put in a very substantial amount of, of, of money into the sector to keep it sustainable and to keep services open and to match the huge um, determination that we've seen from providers and childcare professionals to do the same, both in the context of the continuation of the existing payment schemes and uh, the additional money uh, invested through the e e EWSS. We'll be looking at, we are examining what happens from the 5th of March on when we look at, at those measures. Obviously, the longer term funding of this sector is a key issue as well. You know we have the expert funding group. They've brought forward a number of papers already. I would hope to have substantial information from them halfway through the, this year to be able to inform, uh, I suppose, the, 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 the advocacy I make for additional funding in Budget 2022. Thank you. Deputy Tully? No? Minute, one right. minute left. I just have one, I'm just going to let one question, and it's in relation to the vaccine. Um, and I know there has been some confusion over whether it's priority six, or sorry, category six or category 11. Um, I think category six actually says key work workers. It doesn't say childcare or early years professionals. So I'm just wondering, can we get absolute clarity that they are now category six or are they still in category 11? If you know that minister, or if not, if you can come back to me, thanks. Minister. Thank, thanks, Deputy. Yeah, I, I know there's some confusion about that, and uh, certainly I, I regret that any fusion, uh, confusion was, was in the ether. Um, he, 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 uh, obviously, respons responsibility for the programme rests with the Department of Health and the HSC. Currently, ELC and SAC staff are priority 11 for vaccination. Um, I have advocated with the HSE and with the Department of Health that that prioritisation continues to be re-examined. I know Deputy Cullinan got a, a response that indicated a higher priority. I've asked the HSE to contact him. I think they may have contacted him this morning with a cor correction on that point. But I think it is important to say that me and my department continue to engage with the Department of Health on the prioritisation of childcare uh, professionals within the vaccination programme. And as evidence changes in any way, we will continue to do so. Thank you, Mr.